Good evening. evening. Welcome to worship on this eve of Pentecost 15 and a special welcome to guests and visitors. A few announcements that I want to highlight for you. Uh, First of all, next Saturday will be the Iowa Mission District Convocation in Emmons. And also it will be rally day for us as we celebrate the the gift of Christian education. Newsletter for September and also prayer calendar for September are both available in printed form back on the back table there in the gathering space. Uh, Don't forget that on September 25th, it'll be Bible Saturday, so you can bring your favorite copy of the Bible with you to church, and uh, we'll be celebrating with a representative from the Gideons, and so there'll be an opportunity also to support a free will offering and support the distribution of Bibles into the hands of God's people. Emmanuel Nominating Committee also, we're into the month of September, and you can see the names of people listed in your bulletin. So if you've been thinking of or looking for a way to serve Christ and his church, uh, please take note of some of the positions that are open and ways that you can serve, whether it be on council, the Nominating Committee, Audit Committee, or a voting member for a convocation. So please take note of that as well. Today, I always remember when my little granddaughter, Hope, is celebrating her birthday. Uh, She's five years old today, right, Hope? Yep. She's not a little baby anymore. She's a big girl. She's growing up fast. And uh, I always remember this particular day because when she was baptized, I told Cabe Siebenhaler, uh, Cabe is how old today? 18. 18? That's what I thought. I I said, Cabe, you're always going to remember Hope's birthday because it's the same as yours. And, of course, I always remember Cabe's birthday because it's the same day as Hope's. So happy birthday to Cabe and to Hope and to all who celebrate the gift of life as a child of God. And then also, congratulations to my dear friend Jay Stoyles. Uh, You know that his wife Kelly had passed away recently and I took uh, care of her funeral for the family. Uh, They've been waiting for a couple of grandchildren, one in September, one in October. And uh, Samuel Tucker Stoyles was born this morning about 3 a.m. in Ann Arbor, Michigan. And that's where Jay's son Nick is doing his residency also. So we're rejoicing with them and giving thanks to God uh, for a safe pregnancy and the birth of a healthy child. Other announcements are in your bulletin. Please take note of those as well. Let's rise as we are able, our entrance song, Healer of Our Every Ill. Beyond the 
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and also, also with, with you. you. In the beginning was the Word. And, and the, the Word, word was, was with God, God and, and the, the word, word was God. In the Word was life. And the life was the, was the light of all people. people. The Word became flesh and lived among us. And, and we, we have seen, seen his, his glory, glory full of grace and truth. Our scripture song, Word of God, come down on earth. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, always lead and follow us with your grace that we may be still more intent on doing good. Grant this, we pray, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for the hearing of God's word. The first lesson is from Isaiah chapter 35, beginning with verse 4. Say to those who have an anxious heart, Be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, with the recompense of God. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap like a deer, and the tongue of the mute sing for joy. For waters break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool and the thirsty ground springs of water. The word of the Lord. Thanks be, be to, God. to God. Our psalm is Psalm 146. We'll read it responsively. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will, I will praise, praise the Lord as long as, long as I, I live. live. I, I will sing, sing praises, praises to my God while I have my being. my being. Put not your trust in princes, in a son of man, in whom there is no salvation. When, when his, his breath, breath departs, he returns, he returns to, to the earth. earth. On, On that, that very day, day his, his plans, plans perish. perish. Blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord his God. Who made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, who keeps faith forever. 
who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord Lord opens opens the the eyes eyes of the blind. blind. The The Lord Lord lifts up those those who are bowed bowed down. down. The The Lord Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the sojourners. He upholds the widow and the fatherless, but the way of the wicked he brings to ruin. The Lord will reign forever. Your God, O Zion, to all generations. Praise the Lord. The second reading is from James chapter 2, beginning with verse 1. My brothers, show no partiality as you hold the faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory. For if a man wearing a gold ring and fine clothing comes into your assembly, and a poor man in shabby clothing also comes in, and if you pay attention to the one who wears the fine clothing and say, you sit here in a good place, while you say to the poor man, you stand over there, or sit down at my feet, Have you not then made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my beloved brothers, has not God chosen those who are poor in the world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom, which he has promised to those who love him? But you have dishonored the poor man. Are not the rich the ones who oppress you and the ones who drag you into court? Are they not the ones who blaspheme the honorable name by which you were called? If you really fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. You are doing well. But if you show partiality, you are committing sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. For whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point has become guilty of all of it. What good is it, my brothers, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can that faith save him? If a brother or sister is poorly clothed and lacking in daily food, and one of you says to them, go in peace, be warm and filled, without giving them the things they need for the body, what good is that? So also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith apart from your works, and I will show you my faith by my works. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to to God. God. Gospel according to St. Mark, the seventh chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus returned from the region of Tyre and went through Sidon to the Sea of Galilee in the region of the Decapolis. And they brought to him a man who was deaf and had a speech impediment, and they begged him to lay his hand on him. And taking him aside from the crowd privately, He put his fingers into his ears, and after spitting, touched his tongue. And looking up to heaven, he sighed, and said to him, Ephatha, that is, be opened. And his ears were opened, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. And Jesus charged them to tell no one. But the more he charged them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. And they were astonished beyond measure, saying, He has done all things well. He even makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to to you, you, O O Christ. Christ. Congregation may be seated. I posted earlier today a children's message about Ephatha and about hearing for the children and their parents or grandparents. And so pass the word around. I encourage people to take uh, a listen to what's been posted on our Facebook page. Let us pray. 
Gracious Father, fill us with your spirit that we may hear and receive your word. Give us ears to hear and tongues to speak. In Jesus' name, amen. And they were over the top amazed beyond belief. And they were astonished beyond measure. When was the last time you were astonished or amazed? Perhaps it was a good happening, maybe it was a sad happening, but being astonished, amazed, over the top, inexplainably, is rather nice, isn't it? Most of the time, astonished. That's what happens in our gospel. The people are astonished beyond measure. They can't put it into words. They can't wrap their heads around it. I remember when we moved from Minnesota to Tacoma, and we were looking for housing, and we had to figure out, well, how are we going to afford this? And we found a place for $250,000. And then within a short time of only a few months, the house suddenly was valued at 325000 And people were flipping homes, you know, after only maybe three to six months and making thousands of dollars. I thought, wow, I am astonished, <laughs> amazed. Well, then you know what happened to the housing market. It took a deep dive, and suddenly our house was only worth $200,000. Well, good thing we didn't plan on moving, right? And then as the years passed, suddenly then, we got a call to come to Minnesota to serve Emmanuel. What would happen with that house? Well, we didn't get 325000 but we also didn't get 200000 we got 250000 the same price that we had paid for it. And I was astonished. When they diagnosed prostate cancer in my body, which is a temple of the Holy Spirit, just like your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit, well, I was astonished in a good way because it was just surveillance. It didn't require any kind of treatment or surgery. That was good. And then during the COVID-19, I had some abdominal pain, and I go in, and they say, well, we got some bad news for you. Inoperable pancreatic cancer. I didn't expect that. And so I was astonished beyond measure. But now, for three months, I've been on a chemo break. And they can't explain it. But you and I know that in these times, much prayer. Little Ariana, 10 years old. We can't understand why that happens to one so young. But we know the power of prayer. And we believe that God is holding her and her family and loved ones in his hands. Astonished beyond belief. Like, for example, when you're praying for a couple of gals, Jay Stoyle's daughter and daughter-in-law, one expecting in September, one expecting in October, and then you find out September 2nd is the due date for Bethany, and we're praying for her. Safe pregnancy, safe delivery, and then they discover the baby is breech. They're going to have to do a C-section. Well, what do God's people do? We pray. We pray specifically that God would flip that little rascal inside of his mother's womb so that he would be in position for the appropriate birthing. They went in for the C-section, and the doctor, he says, you know what, we're just going to check one more time. Lo and behold, the baby had flipped, and the little boy Samuel was ready then for delivery. My wife says to me, I prayed for that, that God would flip that child in his mother's womb. Well, an unbeliever will say, ah, just coincidence, just luck. But a child of God who has saving faith in Jesus knows the power of prayer. That's what we're getting at in our gospel for tonight. 
When things come our way and it's not always the news we want to hear, or when things come our way and it's news over the top, and we're grateful, and we're astonished, and we're amazed, and like the crowd that gathered there in the Decapolis, they testify to the truth. He has done all things well. He even makes the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. He even, our Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ, the one who forgives us our sins, he even cares about our inabilities to speak, about the little bumps in the road or the big bumps in the road that come our way regarding our physical health. Astonished beyond belief, beyond measure, grateful to God for the good news that comes our way. Our gospel reading for tonight, only a few verses, but it's packed with the presence and the power of God. Did you know, for example, that in our gospel reading for tonight, Mark chapter 7, that the early church saw it as a baptismal story? And even at the time of Martin Luther, in 1533, when Martin Luther was commenting, preaching on Mark chapter 7, Luther said, this is more than just physical hearing and speaking. Because faith comes by the hearing of God's word. And what is heard comes from the preaching of Christ. If we confess with our lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in our hearts that God raised him from the dead, we will be saved. Luther said, there are thousands of people who have a much bigger impairment than being deaf or mute. He was talking about unbelief. And in 1523, Martin Luther wrote a baptismal liturgy that was based on Mark 7, our gospel reading for tonight. And in that baptismal liturgy, this is what Luther said. He instructed the pastor that was baptizing a child to get some saliva on the fingers and to stick those fingers into that child's ears and to place that saliva on the fingers on that child's tongue. I kid you not. The early church understood that and did that. Martin Luther, the 1500s, understood that, did that, wrote a liturgy. I was thinking today, People would probably think I'm crazy if I were to do that. But, but you know, it's going to be the 500th anniversary in 2023 of Martin Luther's liturgy. Wouldn't that be amazing on the 500th anniversary of Martin Luther's baptismal liturgy if we did what he instructed people to do and he got that from the early church? In the ears, on the tongue, and then you cry out, Ephatha, be opened, be released, be free. Saving grace of God. You see, Luther, he understood that about our gospel reading for tonight, that it's not just a miraculous healing story, but it's about what God does for us in the washing of regeneration and renewal, what God is doing every day, the miracle of repentance, the miracle of absolution. Your sins are forgiven. Did you hear that? Be open. You see? He's preparing a place for you in heaven. Did you hear that? Be open. Ephatha. You see, I have a hearing impairment. Don't know exactly if it's because of uh, machinery on the farm I grew up on or, or what caused it. I just know that it's a nuisance. And even with hearing aids, if someone is not looking at me when they talk, if they're looking away, 
if they're mumbling, if they're whispering, I have to say, what did you say? What did you say? Look at me! <laughs> because otherwise it's got to bounce off the wall before it comes back to me. <laughs> Two men went in to check about hearing aids. And the distributor said, well, we have them from $25,000 all the way down to $1.50. And so the one guy said, well, what do you get for $25,000? He said, well, it's state-of-the-art electronics. It translates into three languages. It's amazing. And the other guy, his friend says, well, what about that $1.50 variety? He said, well, here's what it looks like. It was a button and a piece of string. He said, you put the button here in your ear, you put the string in your pocket, and you'll be surprised at how loud people will talk to you when they are around you. You see? One guy comes out and he says, I just bought the best hearing aids that money can buy. Really? Yeah, it's got a lifetime warranty. They're imported. And his friend says what? He says, well, like, what's the brand? The friend looks at his watch and says, it's about a quarter past three. <laughs> you see, we can laugh a little bit about hearing impairment, but when it affects us or someone we love and care about, it's no small matter. And so when we hear this story, this amazing story in Mark chapter 7, we need to understand what the early church did, what Luther understood, that this is about baptism. This is about discipleship. This is about being able to hear the gospel, being able to taste and receive the sacrament of Holy Communion, the body and blood of Jesus, saving grace of God. So Jesus went into the Decapolis. Deca, ten polis, cities, ten cities, Gentile area. There were some Jews there, but there was a whole bunch of unbelievers there. And so Jesus is over in the Decapolis. Now, evidently, the word is getting around. And we hear that there are so men who have a friend. And these men, they take their friend who can't hear and who can't really speak, deaf and mute. They take him to Jesus because they believe that he has some kind of miracle working power. And in our story, we hear that they beg Jesus. It's a beautiful word. I mean, they're not just casually asking Jesus if perhaps, maybe, he might consider helping their friend. How many of you have dogs? You've ever had a dog? You ever seen a dog beg? Oh, my goodness. When we had our Sheltie Sampson, you know, they get down to their back legs like that, you know, they got this up here like this, and, and they're whimpering. <laughs> I'm there. Be you beggar? I don't know what it looked like, but I do know what the Greek word says. They were pleading. They were begging Jesus to please heal their friend. Don't you want to have a friend like that? I want to have a friend like that, that'll do anything and everything because they love me, because they want to see me made well and healed. This guy's got good friends that really care about him. And they're right down there on their knees, imploring, begging, pleading. And what does Jesus do? I mean, you can understand why the early church and why Luther in the 1500s saw this as something more than just physical healing, but spiritual healing. 
Jesus takes him aside. I mean, evidently he's not worried about getting a nice press release. He takes them aside so that they can have a private moment. And then he puts his fingers into this deaf man's ears, signaling that there's some blockage there that needs to be removed. And then he spits, and he takes the spit on his fingers, and he puts it inside of the man's mouth and touches his tongue. You see, in the first century, at the time of Jesus, they knew that saliva had medicinal power, healing power. Now, this man may have been deaf and mute, but he wasn't blind. He knew that when Jesus started spitting and using saliva, there was the possibility <laughs> that there was a healing that was going to take place. You see? Now, Jesus looks up to heaven. That's no small thing. You've read your Bibles. You know that Jesus, when he's looking up to heaven, like right before he raises Lazarus from the tomb, or, or when Jesus is looking up to heaven right before he takes five loaves of bread and two fish and feeds thousands of people, he's making it perfectly 100% clear that this is no random act of kindness. This is God Almighty doing his stuff as only God can do it. God's in charge, and God is the healer, always the healer. He gets the credit. He gets the glory, always. Jesus wants to make sure that they don't miss this, his disciples, the friends, the deaf and mute men, the crowds that are with it, seeing and hearing distance. And then St. Mark says, Jesus sighed. Um, it's the same word that Paul uses for groaning. In our weakness, the Holy Spirit prays for us with sighs and groans too deep for words. Jesus is sighing and groaning. Why? Because it pains him. It pains Jesus to see what sin has done and how it has corrupted and injured and wounded God's creation. And so he sighs. And then not like a magician with a wand. It's not like abracadabra, my friends. It's not hocus pocus. He says, Ephatha. Be opened. Like ears that are plugged. Like a heart that is stopped beating. Like a tongue that need to be unchained. Like saving faith, the work of the Holy Spirit, Ephatha. And immediately, did you hear that word? Immediately. This guy didn't have to go through several weeks of physical therapy, you know, learning how to speak, Immediately, we are told that he could hear well perfectly and that he could speak plainly. So you see, the crowds, the friends, the people, they were all astonished beyond measure. This man has done all things well. 
The word is literally wonderful. Wonderful, counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace. This man does all things wonderfully. You see? He even makes the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. That's what Luther says happens, you know, when we're saved. When we're saved by the grace of God, saving faith, we confess not only our sins, but we confess his lordship. We make sure that people know who gets the credit. Astonished beyond measure, over the top, wonderful. The people didn't know it, I don't think, but they were acknowledging that Jesus was Messiah. You see, if we'd read all of our scripture lessons for tonight, we would have read a passage from Isaiah 35, which says that when Messiah comes, the Lamb are going to walk and dance and run. And the blind are going to see. And the deaf are going to hear. And the mute are going to speak. And the poor are going to have good news preached to them. Liberty. Chains removed. Liberty to those who are captive. This man does all things well. Wonderful. He even. You see, that's just the icing on the cake, my friends. You can't stop there. Because if that's all we want is good news about our cancer or good news about our physical ailments, then we miss the greatest gift of all. Your sins are forgiven for Jesus' sake. He paid the full price through his death on the cross. He rose on the third day. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? Did you hear that he's the first fruits of those who fall asleep? And that he's the resurrection and the life? And that he has a place prepared for you? for all eternity in heaven, those are words that we need to hear. Be opened. Ephatha. Not just a miracle of physical healing, but the miracle of salvation in the name of Jesus. It was a Wednesday night 8.30 p.m. to be precise. It was March of 1981. And Joseph, who was blind, fell down the stairwell going into the basement. Joseph, when he was 14 months old, because of some kind of an optic nerve uh, disease, he lost his sight in the right eye. Joseph, in 1981, was 32 years old, and six years before that, this optic nerve problem, he lost his sight in the left eye also. So for six years, could not see anything. And so he's making his way in the house there, down the stairwell, to get something in the basement. And someone in the family Maybe his little five-year-old daughter, whom he's never actually been able to see, maybe she put the dog dish with water in it on the stairwell. He hit that dish. He stumbled. He rolled. He turned. He fell as he went down the stairs in the stairwell. And at the bottom of the basement there, after kind of plowing into the walls, he hit his head right against that cinder wall. And he was dazed. And then he looked and he saw this gray furnace. And he realized 
I can see. He didn't go to bed that night. You know why? Because he was looking like at his five-year-old daughter and like at the trees and the flowers outside. Everything that maybe we take for granted. Joseph didn't take it for granted. He was looking and he was seeing and he was praising God. And people kept saying, how did it happen? Joseph, how did it happen? And you know what Joseph said? The tongue was released. Open. He said, God did it. No, how did this happen? Well, God put the dog's water dish on the stairwell and I tripped over it and banged my head and God opened my eyes. Don't you see? God did it. And the doctor that examined him, somebody said, well, what do you think? He said, I can't explain it, but he believes that God did it. I'm not going to take that from him. Are you? Seeing his daughter for the first time, seeing the majesty of all creation, Joseph was astonished beyond measure. That's what baptism does to us, my friends. When we embrace it and live it every day, when we let our light shine for the praise and glory of God, when heartaches and hardships and difficulties and things that we can't understand or explain come our way, we hear the word epitha, be opened. And it is. And we're grateful. And we say, thank you, Jesus. He even makes the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. Thank you, Jesus. You get all the credit. You get all the praise. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I invite you to rise as you are able. Our song of the day is called, O Son of God in Galilee, and the words are printed like in your bulletin on the screen, but it's to the tune of, O God, our help in ages past. Oh, blessed Lord. 
continue with our confession. In Christ you've heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. We, we believe, believe in, in him, him and are marked, marked with, with the seal of the, the promised Holy Spirit. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe, I believe in, in God, God the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And earth. I believe, I believe in, in Jesus Christ, Christ, his only Son, our Lord. Lord. He, he was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. Mary. He, he suffered under Pontius Pilate, Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Build yourselves up on your most holy faith. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Keep yourselves in the love of God. Look forward to the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. Behold, everything has become new. God has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Therefore, let us be reconciled to God and to one another. Gracious God, have, have mercy, mercy on us. In, in your compassion, compassion forgive us our sins, sins known, known and unknown, things done and left undone. Uphold us by your Spirit, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Sisters and brothers, rejoice. Mend your ways. Encourage one another. Agree with one another. Live in peace. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and also with you. you. Share God's peace this day and in the days ahead as you are able. You may be seated. We'll continue with our prayers. Each petition will end with, Lord, in your mercy, and we'll reply, hear our prayer. Trusting through the power of the Holy Spirit in the goodness of our Heavenly Father, let us pray in Jesus' name for the church, the world, and one another. Father, thank you for James' blunt, blunt words about partiality and judgment and about faith and works. Thank you for stretching our hearts, minds, and souls as you challenge and enlarge our faith in Jesus. Thank you for opening our ears to hear and our tongues to speak. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. prayer. Give the people of this congregation such confidence in the love of Christ that they trust his holy word, treasure his life-giving sacraments, and constantly tell others of his great mercy. Lord, in your mercy. Hear, Hear our, our prayer. prayer. On this Labor Day weekend, we thank you for the dignity of work, the joy of relaxation, and the opportunity to create. Grant satisfaction and just reward for honest labor of hand and mind. Help us provide relief for those who cannot work or whose businesses are struggling. Teach us to honor all work that is done with an upright heart. Lord, in your mercy. Hear, Hear our, our prayer. prayer. You are Lord of all the nations. To you all the rulers of the earth shall bow down and give an account of their deeds. Tell them to act with wisdom and without partiality. Let them care for the widows, widowers, orphans, and destitute. Cause them to seek justice within and peace beyond their borders. Make them examples of integrity and compassion to their citizens. Lord, in your mercy. Hear, Hear our, our prayer. prayer. 
Protect and guide our military and all who stand in harm's way. Bring healing to the wounded and give strength and patience to their families. Use their skills, whether here or abroad, to establish the blessings of liberty, justice, and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear your our prayer. prayer. Grant that all who cry to you for help and healing, for forgiveness and restoration, and for guidance and comfort, that they may find your grace sufficient for their need. Especially we lift up before you these. We pray your healing presence for Gary and for Julie Engel, for Helen Jacobson, for Jenny Brown, for Letha Bothan, for Ariana Ponadan, for Sherry Vamhoff, Barb Stephenson, Don Holton, Deb Spitzer, and her daughter Ashley Spitzer. We pray for comfort for the family and friends of Nancy Teria. And we praise you, O Lord, for the gift of new life, the birth of Samuel to Nick and Bethany. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. prayer. Father, we entrust to you all who clung to your promises in this life and whose death we now mourn. Grant us hope in our Lord Jesus so our sorrow turns to joy. Help us to encourage and assist each other. By your gracious spirit, let us with all the redeemed bless and adore you for the majesty and love which shines in the face of your dear Son. Lord, in your mercy. Hear, Hear our, our prayer. prayer. Heavenly Father, incline your ear to our prayers and answer them according to your most gracious and holy will. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, Father who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, come thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And, and forgive us our trespasses, our trespasses as, as we, we forgive, forgive those who trespass against us. And, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, kingdom and the power and, and the glory, glory forever and ever. And ever. Amen. Amen. Please rise for the benediction as you are able. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our sending song, There is a Bomb in Gilead.
Blessed Labor Day weekend to you and yours. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.